All right, uh, so news of the day for Tuesday, and lots of stuff going on right now. Lots of discussions as we are in the Christmas month. Normally, you would think things would be slowing down. No. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is what happened in Vancouver with Mark Borowiecki, and I, I want to say I wanted to do just a video just on that yesterday, but due to timing... Just, I couldn't do it justice. The story is is just too good. Mark Borowiecki, who has been amazing for the Ottawa Senators through this adjustment period under Eugene Melnick, and he has been kind of the face of the franchise, for, for lack of a better term, over the last year and a half, I would say, approximately. Uh, he's He could run for mayor of Vancouver right now and probably win it. Uh, spot somebody breaking into somebody else's car. Uh, they were getting away on their bike. Uh, I, I, I do think that was a pedal bike. Now, the speculation whether it was a pedal bike or a motorcycle. I think it's better if we don't know the whole idea. So, I didn't research the whole story because, honestly, I think whatever I've got in my head is so much better and so much more amazing than likely how it actually went down. He clotheslines the guy off the bike and takes the belongings this guy had stolen out of the car and holds onto them until the cops get there. I can only assume he has a bag in one hand and the criminal in the other, up this way. So, the guy's a hero, um, saved passports. So whoever's passports those were, passports are a real pain to replace. And so, excellent. Uh, Mark Borowiecki, the guy honestly is a great guy. Um, only in hockey, right? Um, now, also an only in hockey thing right now, Mark Crawford's on leave with the Chicago Blackhawks. After it came out from Sean Avery that he kicked him during a game. Now, Sean Avery did the camera on his phone thing where he's like, oh, I deserve to get a kick in the A. It's fine. That's fine. I deserved it. Why are you bringing it up right now, Sean? Because you knew this. Didn't you know something was going to happen out of this? So, I I don't think Crawford loses his job over this. Because keep in mind, the, the whole Peters thing, he resigned. And what was more... Uh, concerning with Peters was the other bit with Akeem Alou. That seemed to be what the team was upset about. I think we're just at a time where coaches, they, they can't be doing the, the physical abuse of players anymore. And that's not great coaching, to be honest. It's it's not. And and that's, you know, I, I think coaches themselves will admit that. So we're, we're going through something with hockey, and that's going to continue. And for the Chicago Blackhawks, they weren't just short, short of coach, coaches last night. They were short, short of players. Uh, Shaw's got a concussion. There's a number of players that are injured, but only one's on the IR, who is Kajula. So they didn't have the cap space to put a full team on the ice. They had 17 players, uh, 17 skaters, to start the game 11 forward, 6 defensemen last night. It's not a reason why they got shut out by the Blues, but it doesn't help. So for the Chicago Blackhawks, it's been a tough last couple of weeks for Crawford. We'll see what happens. Odds are they're going to ask around, ask the players on the team if anything like that's happened. When they say no, um, I, I figure he, he sticks around. I don't think we're going to see a period where every single coach is necessarily going to lose their job, but they're going to want to make sure, okay, is this a pattern or is this just he kicked Sean Avery, which... Uh, one quote I saw was, well, all, all, all fans have wanted to kick Sean Avery, so... and. Fair play, I honestly. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens with this. Mike Babcock's in the news again. So apparently he gave Johan Franzen a breakdown. That came from Chris Chelios. So Johan Franzen's been interviewed by a Swedish newspaper. And he has basically said uh, dealing with Babcock gave him nightmares. Literal nightmares. Now I can speak for myself that dealing with a boss that is verbally abusive every day It'll mess with your head. And what he what he's basically said here is he's a meticulous coach, he's a great coach, and the worst human being I've ever met. That's what Franzen said. And what Chelio said as well is that he's terrible with veterans. That in, in training camp, uh, he went to Chelios and said, your job here is to, to bring along Brett Lebda. Do you remember Brett Lebda? Okay. So his job was to mentor Brett Lebda, and he's like, but I'm a plus in every game, and he's trying to point out, like, I'm still a useful player. And Babcock basically said, hey, if you want to go have an argument about this with Ken Holland, we can get you traded. So he's like, fine. So I'll be a mentor. I'll do this. I'll let my time get cut back. And then he tried to healthy scratch him before a game in Chicago. 
So he tries to healthy scratch Chris Chelios for an outdoor game at Wrigley Field in Chicago, likely because that's his hometown. And I, I, I don't know. And he, he talked as well about how uh, he scratched Medano at the end of the season, which didn't make any sense. Talked about Spezza being scratched against Ottawa in the opening game of the year. Now, that didn't make any sense. And just he, he has it out with veterans a lot. And in that game, he ended up arguing with Ken Holland. Holland said, no, you're playing him. And he's like, no, 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 I'm the boss. I decide my lineup. I don't want him out there in Chicago. So Chelio said he got two minutes of ice time where he played in the first shift and then his backside stapled to the bench for the rest of the game. And he said he did that just to show Ken Holland and Jim Neal, I run this roster, this is my team, and I decide the lineup. So uh, it was the one game he said where uh, they played seven defensemen, and he was number seven, so he just didn't go on the ice. And and the funny thing is, this this doesn't this doesn't make you know Babcock anything awful in terms of what's been dubbed as the Me Too movement in hockey, but it does frame him as being a complete and total jerk. Like, so if you're a team and you're looking for a coach. Uh, right now, all these stories coming out about Mike Babcock from veteran players, you're going to look at that and go, well, he's not for us. You know, the Seattle link that people put right away. Well, what kind of team is Seattle going to have their first year? They're probably going to have a number of veteran players who are going to have to mentor some young kids and, and, and work as stop gaps until some new guys come in. You don't want a coach who's known for not working very well with veteran players and future Hall of Famers like Medano and Chelios. So, right? Uh, yeah, th this is really interesting, and, and the Franzen and thing's interesting, too, uh, in that, again, you know, coaches verbally berating people, and he said you would see Mike Babcock berating people that worked for the facilities at the Detroit Arena, where he would just, he would just start yelling and screaming at people, and he was, he was a tyrant. And uh, Chelios as well said that he, his ego was the big deal, and he was the big deal. And this this kind of stands to reason then when you look back a couple weeks ago and they asked him, what do you think about your job? And he said, I bet on Mike Babcock. That completely is in line with what these guys are saying. The funny thing is when a coach is winning a Stanley Cup, when a coach is, is, is at the top of the league, they don't say a whole lot about it. But when the team's struggling and when the coach is, is, is out, this is when stuff gets said. So I don't think we're done with the Mike Babcock stories yet. I have a feeling that Spitting Chicklets is going to be putting together a DVD um, in time for playoffs, maybe. Um, I, You know what? I think they'd be smart to do it. I think we could just have stories about Babcock, and you could just have them all in front of a fire or, or out, at a, uh, you know, out at a beach somewhere at the campfire and roasting marshmallows and telling Babcock stories. Who wouldn't want that DVD? All right. Moving along, I jinxed Kulikov in my preview video that just posted, and I'm sorry. Uh, as soon as it goes up, I'm like, all right, what's going on in the news today? Kulikov's out until the All-Star break, so I put that on the board last night. And I thought, oh, maybe I can get Kulikov a point. I got him hurt. Uh, he's, he's out with an upper body injury until the All-Star break, at least. So I apologize to Jets fans, and I apologize to Dmitry Kulikov. I had no idea I was doing that. On the Toronto front, Nick Shore got waived. Uh, sure is an interesting one. Bottom six. See, somebody may pick him up. I, I don't know. I, I doubt it. And marinchin has been recalled. And when I see a move like this, I'm wondering, okay, so is this Sheldon Keith going to Kyle Dubas and going, all right, I want this guy from the Marlies and this guy I think can go down to the Marlies. Or is this just Kyle Dubas making the move on his own? Um, I also wanted to talk about Montreal because I know Habs fans have been losing their minds at the idea of Kincaid going down and Primo coming up. All the indications are that this is just to get Kincaid a couple of games in the American League level and get his confidence back and bring him right back up. He cleared waivers. There's nothing to worry about. They're they're not putting Caden Primo in for 20 games. Caden Primo is not going to get ruined by this process. And if he plays a game and he doesn't play well, these things happen. It's not the end of the world. He's not going to take Carey Price out of a job. He's not going to ruin things in Montreal. I would also put out there that when you look at the teams that are playing really well, whether it's Washington, Boston, the Islanders, St. Louis, uh, Colorado, all of these teams have two good goaltenders. All of them. All of them have a backup goaltender. In the cases of Boston and the Islanders, they don't really have a backup. They just have a rotation. 
you need that in today's NHL with this schedule the way it is. Your 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 really good teams right now are the ones that are rotating goaltenders. So rather than worrying about oh how is this going to affect price, maybe you need to start splitting the starts a little bit more. And Kincaid may not be the answer for that, but if he gets his confidence back in the American League, it could it can only help. So I I don't see this as being a reason to set the house on fire necessarily. But it's Montreal, so there will be some panic about Caden Primo at the age of 20 being brought up. I would point to Philadelphia as a team that last year out of desperation brought up Carter Hart. Turned out to be the best thing for Hart and the best thing for the Flyers. So very honestly, I I think the Habs are are dealing with a lot of stuff right now. It's an eight-game losing streak, and you've got to try something. And the first thing you can change as the general manager is waving the backup goalie, especially like I said, he makes it 1.7 million a year. Nobody's picking that up. It's not a big deal. Uh, so yeah, I I don't think this is going to ruin Primo. I don't think this is the end of the world. I think it's it's a move that gets made anywhere else. Nobody's paying attention to it. We've seen numerous teams move guys down and bring up a third string goaltender for a couple of days. He might even get a backup appearance, and it it doesn't change anything. Um, like yesterday, Vegas acquired Chandler Stevenson from the Capitals for a fifth round pick, which I didn't think justified a video all of its own. Chandler Stevenson's a good bottom six forward. He is, but for the Capitals, they had a cap crunch. Uh, Hagelin's coming back, and because Hagelin's coming, coming back, they needed cap space, and Stevenson's the guy that they sacrificed. It will help Vegas's bottom six. He's a, a useful enough player. He never really lived up to, um... The, the offensive side of things that I think was envisioned of him when he was first coming up, but he's a useful bottom six guy. So uh, the Caps will miss him on some level, but Hagelin's the better of the two players. And for, for Vegas, that's a little bit of depth, and you can never have too much depth at the NHL level. Uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, Hornquist gets hurt at, at practice yesterday. And now apparently he's out longer term. They're not telling you anything more than that, so you got to think it's probably at least a month. Oh, it, it this is this is where things are are weird with Pittsburgh. All right, it's practice now. The one rule is nobody can get. How is Patrick already down? We haven't even started skating yet. What do you mean he hurt himself with the vending machine? What the heck happened? So yeah, you know, and that's that's basically how I picture things working in Pittsburgh right now is that it's it's basically a Simpson sketch where every two seconds somebody's getting hurt. Um, think think about the baseball team that Mr. Burns had all of his ringers all getting hurt at the same time. That's kind of how the Penguins are. And right now uh, they have all of the uh, power plant playing for them, except Homer, who has to sit out because Daryl Strawberry's still okay. Um, and Malkin would be Daryl Strawberry right now, which is weird because Malkin has been hurt so far this year for a while as well. Uh, yeah, for, for Penguins, this is just how this works now. Uh, every day there will be a new injury to report, and uh, I will be here to report it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding any of the news of the day items. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And again, going back to the, the Crawford, Crawford and Babcock and, and all of the other discussions going on with coaches, past and present, this is, this is a conversation hockey players didn't have. These are things that would stay in the locker room, and now they're coming out. And these are stories that would usually come out 10, 20 years after. And in some cases, these are stories that were out there and were not being reported on. Stories that have been told before, where people have said, oh, that guy's a jerk, and nobody paid any attention. And now the media is circling back and going, oh, jerk, you said. When did you say that? Five years ago. Anyways, uh, we'll, we'll see how this all shakes out. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.